In this video, I'll introduce Apache Kafka to you. Let's start by talking about challenges companies face when it comes to data integration. So a company will usually have a source system like a database, for instance, and eventually another part of the company might want to move that data to a different system, for example, a target system. This could be a data lake or a data warehouse. So the data needs to be transferred from the original system to the destination system. And initially this process is quite straightforward. Somebody writes some code and then takes the data, extract it, transform it and then load it to a new target system. This is known as ETL or ETL pipeline. Now, after a while, your company evolves, getting more and more data sources and target systems. And now integrating your data has become a lot more complicated. This is because all of your source systems need to send data to all of your target systems to share information. As we can see, there are a lot of integration involved here. If you have four source systems and four for target systems, you're going to have to write 16 integrations to make it work. Each integration you make comes with difficulty around the protocol, especially as technology evolves. So the data might be transferred over different protocols such as TCP, HTTP, REST, FTP or GDBC. What about the data format? How is the data parsed? Could it be binary, CSV, JSON, Avro, Protobuf and so on? The data schema and its evolution are also important considerations. What happens if the overall shape of the data in your source or target systems changes? Maybe someone adds additional field or renames existing one. Additionally, each source system could experience increased load due to the all connections and requests for data extraction. So how do we solve this problem? We're going to use something called Apache Kafka. We'll still use our source and target systems, but we'll place Apache Kafka in between them to help manage the process. What's going to happen next? The source systems will be responsible of sending data. This process is known as producing where they sending data to Apache Kafka. So what will happen is Apache Kafka will start receiving a continuous flow of your data from all of your source systems. It's like a stream of all of your data flows to it. And for the target systems, whenever they need to get data from your source systems, they will actually connect to Apache Kafka data stream. This is because Apache Kafka is designed to both receive and distribute data. So now your target systems are consuming data directly from Apache Kafka. Things look a bit more organized and scalable with this new setup. So using the same example we discussed earlier, what could be your data sources? All right, your data sources could be things like website activity, information about prices, financial transactions, or how users interact with your platform. And all of these sources generate continuous flows of data. So this means that data is being generated in real time and then it's sent to Apache Kafka. Now, the places where you want to send this data or target systems might be things like data lakes, analytics systems, email, and audit systems. So why do people think Apache Kafka is so great? Well, so Kafka was created by LinkedIn. It's a really big company and they decided to make Kafka open source project, which means anyone can use it for free. These days, it's not just anyone maintaining Kafka. Big, well-known companies like Confluent, IBM, Cloudera, and of course LinkedIn are the main ones maintaining that project. It's distributed, has a resilient architecture, and is fault tolerant. This means that you can upgrade Kafka or perform maintenance tasks without having to shut down the entire system. What also makes Kafka very good is its ability to scale horizontally. This means you can keep adding more and more brokers to your Kafka cluster as time goes on, and you can scale up to hundreds of brokers. Kafka also supports a huge scale of message throughput. For instance, Kafka can 
can handle millions of messages per second, which is why it's used by high volume platforms like Twitter. Also, Kafka high performance delivers really low latency, often measured in less than 10 milliseconds. This extremely quick response time is why we refer to Apache Kafka as a real-time system. Plus, Kafka is widely adopted all over the world. So over 2000 companies are publicly using Kafka, including 80% of the Fortune 100. Big names like LinkedIn, Airbnb, Netflix, Uber and Walmart use Kafka, but you don't have to be a mega corporation to make use of Apache Kafka. So what are the ways people actually use Apache Kafka? It's used as a messaging system. One of the first use cases it was built for was collecting application logs from many different locations and gathering metrics. Activity tracking systems like the one mentioned, collect user clicks from the website. More recently, it has been used for stream processing. It's used for decoupling system dependencies and microservices. It has integration with big data technologies such as Spark, Flink, Storm, and Hadoop. As I mentioned earlier, it is also used for microservices pops up. By now, you should have a comprehensive understanding of what Kafka is, how it is used, and the reasons and process behind its development. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.